The Motherlode Gold Belt, the Sierra Nevada Gold Belt, is famous for the millions of ounces of gold it's produced. And it's still producing good gold for prospectors who go there. I know because I found pounds of gold in the Motherlode Gold Country over the years. But how did all that gold get there? And where did it come from? And where is it now? Did you know that gold discoveries made during the gold rush era fueled geologic discoveries that are still important in the mining industry today? Well, we're going to dig into all those things, where the gold is and where you can find some in this video. And we're starting right now. The Mother Lode or Sierra Gold Belt is the largest orogenic gold belt in North America. It's over 200 miles long and is up to 30 miles wide. It's associated with a series of north northwest trending faults that have been mineralized by hot solutions from down below. There's still a lot of gold to be found. In fact, it's estimated that more than 100 million ounces of gold still remain in the gold belt to be discovered, at least at depths that could be reached by modern mining or surface placers and hard rock, that sort of thing. California, well, that's another story. But let's take a look at a map and dig into the California Gold Belt, where it's at, what it consists of, and what it looks like. Here's a map of North Central California showing where gold mines are located. So every little uh, gold dot there, the yellow dots, uh, represent a gold mine. And you can see there's other ones scattered around and they don't make any differentiation between productivity. So a mine that would produce 10 million ounces and a mine that would produce one ounce are both have a mark. So, you know, they're, they're, you can't tell the difference between the uh, the produ productivity of them. And you can see here that there's this line of just thick with gold mines. And this is, like I say, the 13,000 gold mines of the California Sierra Nevada gold belt. And it, it's on the west side of the Sierras. As you can see, uh, this line of gold mines, if you go further east, the mines kind of disappear and there's not very many of them. And that's going up into the high part of the Sierra. And, you know, once you get up into the solid, younger granitic rocks, uh, there's just not many mines up there. But in the foothill belt, that's where you've got this huge, you know, layer of mines. And, and one of the things about it is there's not 13,000 mines there. No, because they're on top of each other. And, you know, you got ones you can see and ones that are just buried underneath 10 or 15 other mines because the dots are, you know, the dots like. 10 miles in real life. And you can see where this lies, you know, San Francisco Bay is to the lower left and uh, the place where uh, California, the eastern border of California changes angle and goes from being a uh, northwest southeast to vertically north. Uh, that's actually in Lake Tahoe. That change of angle is in Lake Tahoe. So uh, you can see how this, it's just thick with mines and you can understand how it's so productive and even to the north of this uh, belt of mines you know where it kind of disappears going to the north well the rocks that have gold bearing you know activity in them uh, continue but when you go far enough to the north they get buried with uh, with younger volcanic rocks and so they're no longer exposed they're covered over but that uh, gold bearing area keeps going farther north than uh, than what's shown on the map, map because it, but there's no mines there because the gold bearing rock is buried underneath younger volcanic rock that doesn't have anything in it and here's a geologic map of the southern end of that uh, metamorphic belt uh, the Basically, this is the part that's technically, according to what geologists say, is the mother load. Uh, and generally, most prospectors will use mother load country or mother load region, you know, generally to include the whole of the Sierra Nevada metamorphic belt. But the uh, light blue and dark blue rocks, the dark blue is uh, basically a slate, the Mariposa formation, and the light blue is uh, greenstones and amphibolites and such. Uh, and then the purple 
is mostly the Calaveras Formation, and all three of these are important. They're all three metamorphic rocks, and all three are important gold-bearing and gold-host rocks for veins and mineralization. The light green is a rock basically called serpentine or serpentinite, and it's uh, come up from great depths along faults along this metamorphic belt. Here's a map of the northern end of the California uh, gold belt, uh, the Sierra Nevada foothill gold belt. And this is uh, same kind of rocks. You don't see the Mariposa formation, but the light blue is the greenstone and amphibolite. And the uh, purple is, for the most part, the Calaveras formation. And both of those are very, uh, very popular or very popular. Uh, prolific sources of mineralization. And then the green is the serpentine. And again, along the boundaries of these serpentine rocks, there's often vein systems that uh, can be very rich in gold. The Sierra Nevada Foothills Gold Belt is host to some 13,000 mines of various type, both uh, hard rock and placer, uh, that spread across a, a long metamorphic belt that goes from the central, the west side of the central Sierra Nevada up to the north, uh, through the northern part of the, cent the Sierra Nevada. As I mentioned, that belt is about 200 miles wide, and it has a historic production of over 125 million ounces of gold, a huge amount, making it one of the world's premier gold deposits, or premier gold regions, or gold areas. The Sierra Nevada Gold Belt is uh, associated with a series of faults, and in, they're in this uh, North northwest trending a uh, belt of metamorphic rocks and there's a uh, various parallel ones the main one is called the Malone's fault zone but there are uh, belts that are both to the east and to the west of the main uh, the main Malone's fault zone but they've yielded huge amounts of both placer and hard rock gold along these fault zones in places have been intruded ultra basic rocks that are uh, like peridotite and dunite that have been altered in many places to serpentine or serpentinite. And they have basically emplaced along these fault zones because the fault zones go very, very deep into the earth. And the, these ultra basic rocks are lit up, literally brought up from the, uh, the way deep in the earth's mantle, you know, below the level of the, the tectonic plates from, from just below them. It's brought up because the fault zones are so deep. They're basically regional types of faults that often go for miles. And here and there, they've had quartz veins that are gold bearing and placed along these fault zones. The east and west fault zones are roughly parallel to the uh, to the main Malonis fault zone, although there are some that are, you know, go to another angle cattywampus to the main north, uh, north, northwest uh, trend of the Malonis fault zone. And that's how it was when the first prospectors arrived in California when James Marshall first discovered gold and they began to realize this whole area was full of gold and, and lots of gold deposits and lots of guys were taking out huge amounts of gold. They came from all over and they dug up the gravels and they ran them through their sluices and they got huge amounts of gold. And when shoveling into a sluice box wasn't enough, they got high pressure water and washed away entire hillsides. And they also dug into the hillsides and they found these rich gold bearing quartz veins and they followed them deep underground. Here these early day miners are working on the 1400 foot level. But man did they find the gold. All in all the western slope of the Sierra Nevada has yielded more than 95 million ounces of gold. Some of it in giant nuggets like this but a lot of it smaller sizes. But there's still gold to be found there today and prospectors are out finding their own gold. And if you want to find gold well you got to study and learn. If you want to get a description of all the different mining districts in that gold country Take yourself and get on Google and Google Bulletin 193, Gold Districts of California by William Clark. Now, you can buy a copy if you want a paper copy. You can buy a copy. If you just want to download and get a PDF copy for free, you can do that too. This is my copy bought many years ago.
and I still use it all the time for research and figuring out new places to go, to go prospecting. I bought my first copy in the late 70s, long before there was, you know, a public internet that uh, people used to get PDF files. I heartily recommend this book. If you're going to prospect in Northern California, you should have a copy, PDF or otherwise, and, and use it because it's given me all kinds of great ideas. Now, wherever you go prospecting, finding gold is a skill. It's one thing to tell you that out in the so-and-so area, there's been gold mined or so-and-so river or stream has gold in it. But where do you actually look when you get there? Do you just throw your pan in the water and wherever it lands, that's where you start digging? Or you take your metal detector out and you throw a rock and wherever the rock lands, that's where you start detecting? No. You know, it's a skill to find gold, and the more you know, the better the odds of your success with it. And at $3,000 an ounce, which is, it's over $3,000 an ounce right now, at that kind of price, it's worth getting out there and exploring for gold. And in order to impart to you those skills of finding your own gold and being successful with gold mining, I wrote a book. It's called Fistful of Gold. And then I'm also partnering with a, a retail company that sells gold pans and sluice boxes and metal detectors and all that kind of stuff called High Plains Prospecting. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about my book and about High Plains right now. This is my book, Fistful of Gold. And like I say, it's an encyclopedia of prospecting. And, you know, if you want to go out and find your own nuggets, you want to go find your own gold, you want to be successful, well, it's about what you know. Uh, the guys who are finding gold they have a knowledge. It's a skill. You know, I sometimes compare it to like being an electrician. Just buying a voltmeter at Home Depot doesn't make you a journeyman electrician. And having a sluice box or a metal detector or a gold pan doesn't make you a successful prospector. It's about what you know, right? And that's why I wrote this book. Like I say, it's an encyclopedia. It has stuff that really is um, for beginners. It has stuff that's for mid-level guys that have learned the basics and want to learn more. And it has even some more advanced things for guys that have some experience but want to learn even more. And yeah, I've actually run into people in the field where uh, they tell me something and I say, well, that's a pretty advanced concept. Where'd you learn that? And then they said, I read your book. So, you know, it has a real high rating on Amazon and it's available either from Amazon or from High Plains. Now, High Plains Prospectors, uh, they're an outfit that's a mail order prospecting equipment dealer. They have everything you can imagine from, you know, a simple gold pan through basic metal detectors all the way to high-end metal detectors and other stuff. Uh, if you need it for the prospecting games, High Plains has it. And uh, it, it, you can get a discount code with them. You know, if you order something from them, use the discount code Chris Ralph. It's C H R I S R E L P H in all caps, no space in between Chris and Ralph. And you can get a discount off of what you're buying from them. And then they have my book. You can get my book from them. Uh, and so they're really great guys. And I've dealt with them for a while. And I'm happy to recommend them because. Like I say, they're good dudes. So if you want to learn more about prospecting, consider my book, Fistful of Gold. And be sure to take a look at my uh, YouTube episodes. I've got lots of videos and lots of information on YouTube. And, you know, I oftentimes get people say, hey, Chris, why don't you make a video on XYZ, right? And it's like 90% of the time, it's like, I already have a video on XYZ. Uh, take a look. And so if you're interested, Look at my back catalog of videos because there's a lot of good information there. And we'll see you in the next video.